Hey guys, um, welcome to the part 27, and I say the part for the ABC's possible terminology, so. Alright, so the bottom part is. Um, okay, so the bottom part now is actually the output force. Okay, before I start this video, uh, um, there's a, uh, um, Okay, so um, tomorrow I'm not sure if the video will be uploaded because I haven't been doing many skits. I just wanted to tell you, I might tell you, uh, might tell you some updates around like March or something like that. But I just want to, you know, like, uh, you know, I may have to quit doing skits for a while because uh, I, I don't know, it changed my mind because I'm almost an adult, so... So I shouldn't be acting like an adult. I shouldn't be acting like an adult, an adult man child. So that's what I was going to say because, because I'm almost 18 and I'm turning 18 in a few months. So yeah, yeah, skits videos are actually completely over for my bratty ones. Cause I can't act like a bratty nonstop because that's like way, way too immature for me. So yeah, like, uh, yeah, my birthday will be coming in a few months, and it's going to be my official adulthood, so, yeah, yeah, I probably should, yeah, I, I probably won't be doing skits for a while, so, or maybe not, I'm not sure. I mean, I like doing skits, but I just don't do them very often, because I mostly just focus on my education, that's what I'm, that's what I do, so, it's not my job just to do uh, skip videos. I just do normal videos. That's just what I do. And I feel like I should move on. With, I feel like I should move on with my own videos instead of skip videos. I don't know. We'll just have to see what I can do. So let's just get started with anyway. I'm not sure when I, I I'm I'm not gonna plan to quit skip videos anytime soon, but. All right, let me put this right there. So, output force, output force, output force. Repeat, output force. Output force is a force exerted of an object by a simple machine. Okay, so you can see that machine is actually the machine that is something. What do you What do you think this is? Okay, so the after animation. To be honest with you, I. How many forces are acting in a, on the movable policy below? What do you think it is? Just tell me your best answers in the comments. Okay, so I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a quick um, questions about the output uh, the output force. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm gonna see what the questions are. All right, there we go. Okay, so the output force is, um, many people just say things like, what it, many people just, uh, has been asking people about, uh, asking teachers, I mean, what is an output force? An output force is the force exerted uh, or an object by a simple machine. Okay, so how, can, how do you calculate force output? Calculate the force, the, theor the theoretical force output of a cylinder is a product of the air pressure applied a usable usable's piston area exposed to it f equals p times a where f equals force in lb p equals supply pressure and psi and a equals piston area in n so all right so um, i'm gonna do more questions so what is the output output force of a simple machine the radio of the output in, to input force magnitudes for any simple machine is called its mechanical advantage. MA, MA equals FOFI. One of the simplest machines is the lever, which is a rigid bar pivoted at a fixed place called a fulcrum. Torques are involved in levers since are, there's a rotation about the pivot point. All right, one more question. What is the difference between input and output forces? 
you, your teacher probably asked you ask you that question. It's the the difference between uh, the input force and the output force is the input force you spur on a machine, output force exerted by a machine. Input the distance of the 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 input force acts through output the distance the output force is actually exerted through, like it actually moves through. So that's what I meant. Okay, so I'm gonna present this again. Okay, so you can see the movement of that thing or whatever that is. Yeah. Okay, so there's a second picture. So. There's the input force on the, on the, uh, on a bridge falling session, and this is a lever. The input force is actually the first on the lever, and the lever is on the middle, and the output force is actually on top. And a fulcrum is way on the bottom. So, what is a fulcrum? I'll t tell you later. What, what is a fulcrum? All right, so this is the shoulder of the, the large, and the elbow is actually the middle, and the wrist is actually the end. The bicep muscle is actually the red line, red line that is actually shown on this third picture. Fulcrum is actually the orange, the input force is the green, the output force is the blue. The output force is um, up there, and input force is actually um, on the lever. And the load arm is actually on the left, and the effort arm is on the right. The fulcrum is on the middle, and the input force, and the output force. Which can be one of those lines that can be arrowed. So, I'm going to tell you what is the output force. So, I'm going to type... Okay, so fulcrum. All right, so fulcrum, a prop, specifically the support about which a lever turns, one that supplies capability for action, a part of an animal that serves as a hinge or support. All right, um, all right, three more questions about this. What is another word for fulcrum? Okay, so this is the words, all of the words for fulcrum. Heart, support, hub, and spindle. Those are all pilots. And the hinge is actually point, axle, kingpin, and focal, focal, focal point. Alright, so what is a fulcrum used for? The fulcrum is a point on which the beam pivots. When an effort is applied to one end, one of the lever, the load is applied at the one end of the lever. This will move the mass upward. Alright, one more question. Uh, what is a fulcrum in a human body? Okay, so in the human body, the bone forms a lever, and the fulcrum is a joint where the bone can move around the pivot point. Sometimes your bones can kind of move around a little bit when you're actually moving. The effort, the effort force is provided by the muscles, and it's applied to the lever system at the point where the muscle's tendon attaches to the bone serving as a lever. So, yeah, um, that's all about the... The, uh, the output force, and now we're heading out to the pitch. Well, not the pitch, what the, what the, what, what it, what it sounds like. I'm talking about the pitch in science. All right, so, um, pitch, pitch. I'm not talking about the, um, the pitch that's the sound, but I'm talking about the pitch that is actually, um, on a game, like a, like any sport game. All right, pitch is a name for any of a number of a natural or man manufactured. All right, so the game like the pitch, there's uh, somebody playing golf, which is actually the pitch when you're playing a game or if you're playing baseball or, or tennis or something like that, you can actually pitch one of those times if you want to for extra time. Yeah, pitch is like a... It's like a what is pitch in science? All right, so uh, I'm going to read one of this. So, right, so in psycho psycho 
psychoacoustics, the pitch of a sound is essentially a description of frequency of the sound. A high pitch means high frequency, and a low pitch means low frequency. Pitch can be also be glass and pitch science projects. This, that's what we're talking about right now. The high pitches that are like sounds. Yeah. Yeah, when you're doing like a video or something like that, when you had to have songs in different pitches, that's what I'm talking about right now. I'm not talking about the one that is on there. I'm talking about the pitch that is in the game. Yeah. But now I'm talking about the, the pitch that has sounds. As a sound wave moves through the medium, each particle of the medium vibrates at the same frequency. The back and forth vibra vi vibrational. So you can actually learn about the, the pitch. You can hear what the pitch looks like. You can put it down plus one or negative one. It looks so familiar. Yeah, negative one looks so familiar. And high, and plus one will be a little bit familiar. Yeah. Some of you guys may have found it very familiar, or if you want, you guys want to make a little bit of voice, that sounds fine. All right, enough of the pitch. So let's just go with the, the radio waves. All right, radio waves. Radio waves. Radio waves. Radio waves are a type of electromagnetic radiation with wave wavelength in the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, so this is the, the radio wave that is actually calling, the calling that is actually calling in the second page and the third page. Okay, so you can actually see what is actually happening. Uh, being this and freeze. This is what the high levels of radio waves are. So what do you think that represents to? Just comment down below. Okay, so the range of, the, of that fourth page is actually percent of spe spectral emission. This is the 25 and 50 and 75 to 100. Uh, the line is actually through the 100. So this is all above like 1,292, 1,296 and 101. Um, and so in case of 1,300 and 1,304 and, and 1,308. So we're lands on uh, uh, a a a thousand and three hundred. So it lands like center wavelength. This is a wavelength range NM. This is the W. This is the FWHM. Like you, see, you actually see there is actually the Earth Earthed electric waves. So this is what it represents to on those very high uh, waves that are con constructed by how the movement actually goes for for conversation for conversation waves that are going through together in turn. This is almost about tall, but this is way tall. So yeah, some of those are really small and some of them really higher. Like what do you think how much how how tall is this? What do you think how tall it is? Just give me your answers. I'm just drinking some water. It's a hard day. Uh, I'm gonna try to do more videos uh, tomorrow. I'm gonna try to get on videos. I'm gonna try to. Okay, so hopefully tomorrow I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do some more videos. Uh, tomorrow, I have a lot of them to do tomorrow. So just be aware. It's gonna be all about the the science and the social studies or math or English. It doesn't really matter. All right, enough of the radio waves. So let's just go with the, how many slides do we have? All right, so speed, thermal, energy, ultrasound, velocity, weight, and x-rays. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so six, six slides, all right? We'll try to make it through all the slides. Okay, so maybe on part 28, I might do the ones that are actually I'm gonna do something different. Yeah, one the ones are gonna the ones are actually gonna be something different. So, yeah, just to bear me on that, it can be about social studies or so. All right, speed. Speed's a meter of how many centimeters can go with anything spectrums. 
Okay, so when you're running a car, if you're riding like a Rainbow Lamborghini, you can actually go really, uh, Lamborghinis can actually go really fast. So, okay, so um, you know how much speed you're actually going, like a, like a 380 centimeters are actually, you can actually go. Um, when you're, when you're driving, uh, really, when you're, if you're driving slow, then your car and your, the centimeters can actually go a little bit normal that you're actually going on normal driving, but speed driving is actually, you cannot speed and you cannot, um, you can only speed at the limit that when the sign actually says that you can only speed for. So, um, yeah, you can only speed when you, when, um, when the sign tells you to. Like, do not go really fast about speeding because a cop, can, a police, the police officers can actually give you a ticket. So, so please don't go really fast like the Lamborghini. Because the end of the day, you will end up getting wrecked if you if you see the stop sign, then you have to stop. So, if you're going too fast, then just stop, stop immediately. If you see that red sign, then stop. Pay attention. Watch where you're going. Keep yourself in mind, okay? This is a speed background, and this is how much speed you're actually gaining to. If a, uh, um, you know how much speed that actually, uh, when a, when a car is actually, when the person's driving is actually way more speeder, you don't have to go this speed. You don't have to go that many. You don't have to go 10 times speeding. You can only do what the sign says. Obviously, you guys should know this in driving tests. So I done my driving tests, but I didn't get the results yet. So um, I was going to plan to do more too. So yeah, I'm looking forward to get it on. Yeah, I'm wanting to get it on uh, Colorado. So yeah, um, yeah, that's how um, fast you can only go for when a sign tells you to. I'm not even finished with my... Uh, with my driving's test, I'm gonna finish it more in the future, so just to let you know. Yeah. But I might fail it, but I'm pretty much okay. I can just do it online. Uh to be honest with you, I actually just take this take the driving test online. I just take the driving test online. I don't know, I just do. But in the future when I go to college, uh or maybe Actually, not in Colorado, but maybe in like in this city, this 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 state, I might get my driver's test eventually. All right, let's just move on. Uh, we already did about speed, so let's just, um, yeah, speed was okay. All right, let's talk about thermal energy, which is can be, which is a burning session. So, let's get started. All right, thermal energy, thermal energy. Thermal energy. Thermal energy is the energy that comes from heat to the warmest. Okay, so like, for example, you can actually see the um, the birthday candle, and it's actually burning really, really bad. And you didn't even blow it out yet. Probably, you didn't even you didn't even have any time to blow it blow it out or blow out the candle in time. When your child when your child is having a hard time blowing. Your child forgets to blow it. You have to pay attention because you don't want to bring your cake, or or the whole cake is gonna melt. So, uh, sorry. Always blow your, blow out your candles, no matter what. Okay, so the fourth picture re represents the heat from this and from this. What do you think these? What do you think those are? This is the heat, and this is the VIS, and this is the UV. And this is the, the heat storage. My fault. Case of the the thermal energy is really really hot, so hot you cannot even feel a thing. You will definitely burn your you will definitely uh burn yourself. What what things are that are hot? Okay, so I'm gonna look in Google. What things that are hot? Okay, so things that are hot. I'm gonna tell you a story about. I'm gonna tell you about. Uh, I'm gonna tell you things that are hot. So, looky here. That's fine. Yeah. 
I'm gonna tell you things that are hot. So, like the sun is extremely hot, you cannot even touch it. Okay, so, um, this is really easy for some children, so, this, um, this sun is really, really hot, um, and this birthday candle is actually, when you're doing a birthday candle, um, when you're doing a birthday candle, is um, you have to torture it very carefully, you don't want to burn yourself, obviously, so, yeah, you don't want to burn yourself, and the oven safety, guys, you guys should know this about the, the you guys should know about the, the gun safety, um, no, not the gun safety, but the oven safety, that it's extremely hot, you can actually, you don't, don't let your children do this, so, and the hot, the oven and the stove is, are really, really dangerous, so, so be careful what you do, let your parents do it, not kids, okay, okay, so, um, okay, so, like, the fire is really hot, when you're doing, uh, when you're watching a fire in a backyard, in a camp, when you're going to camping, you can actually watch a fire. Just don't touch it. You might bring yourself. Do not touch a fire, I swear. Like, the most things that are really hot is actually, um, okay, so, the things that are really hot is actually, um, the hottest pepper. Oh, God, the hot chips are really that hot. So, Many people have not been enjoying it. Many people are screaming for hot, screaming for really, really hot. You know how hot it is. Okay, so for example, when you're feeling sick, you feel extremely hot, then you're actually going to throw up. That's how hot you feel. Like the extremely high fever. You, I'm, I have a feeling that you might die from an extremely high fever. I have a really bad feeling. Like the hottest lab temperature in the hottest hyd hydrothermal vent, in the hottest temperature in the United States, in the hottest spot on Earth, in the hottest planet in our solar system, solar, solar system, in the hottest temperature on the sun, like how many solar systems are really hot? Tell me in the comments. All right, let me go back to this. Um, all right, so... Um, Okay, so, so the second picture actually represents to the Cooper heat copper heat transfer pipe, which is located at the at the middle. And the evacuate ev evacuated evacuated is actually the um in the middle with the with the orange line that's been shown. And this so the evacuated evisolated by evisolated tube, which is the gray one, the gray lines. Case of the solar energy are absorbed by the selective surface and transferred to the heat pipe inside the tube. Hot vapor rises to the top, cold, cooled vapor liquefies and it returns to the bottom of the heat pipe to repeat the cycle. So that's what it actually means. That's what hot actually means. So, yeah, learn it for your notes. All right, so heat transfer, transferred of her thermal energy of from line objects to, or system to another. So yeah. Where is that? Oh, okay, I was worried. All right, so we have four slides, right? Okay. Okay, so ultrasound. You guys find it very familiar. You guys find it very, very familiar, okay? So this will make you familiar. Ultrasound, ultrasound, ultrasound. Ultrasound is used to create images of soft tissue structures of matter. Like for example, a baby is actually born in a in the mom's tummy. Is uh the baby was like staying there until the mom gets pregnant, and the baby soonly comes out in the exact date. Like for example, like. Back in uh, back in the early two thousand, back in early of two thousand three. So, back in early back in early two thousand three, uh, I was in my mom's tummy until, uh, I was in my mom's tummy on that day. So, 
yeah, I was, uh, I was rusting really definitely. So, uh, I came out on May 16th. So yeah, that was a really, people were really excited to see the baby of me. I was really crying. Uh, I was so happy to, I was so crying, but I actually got out of mom's tummy. It was, it was uh, strange that I was living in a different, different, different life. Yeah, being born can be actually be very different to you. Like for example, a dog or or baby or baby baby animal that can be born that, that can be born on my on the mom on the the girl animal the pregnant animal the pregnant girl animal the female animal it's tummy. It, it goes on the uterus, obviously it goes on a woman's uterus, but the, the animal has, is on it, on the tummy. So it usually comes out, um, like, just like, just like Lexi, for example. Okay. So Lexi has a lot of babies back in, uh, 2018, um, back in 2018, uh, uh, back in 2018, but Lexi had like four babies. And uh, I named them, and I cannot remember what their names were, but I'll look at them. I remember that they were like, dang, I don't know. Yeah, like uh, the I'm gonna tell you a story about the 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 hottest thing that I've ever touched. Okay, so the hottest thing that I've ever touched was the pan at by accident, and the, my finger hurted really, really bad. I think it was back in like my Nina's house, I think, or Nina's house. Yeah, definitely Nina's house. I was like burning my, burning my little bit, burning my finger, and it actually really hurts. Um, I actually, I don't know, I don't even know why. I don't even know how many times I got hurt with, with touching the pan by accident. All right, so uh, I dealt with it, but. I, I I used to cook eggs in his house all the time because I actually I actually feel hungry inside of me. I usually cook them a little bit brown, to be honest with you guys. I just like them well done, to be honest with you guys. What do you like them? What do you like? To, what do you like your eggs to be cooked? Just comment down below, and I'll give you it. I'll give you a shout out. Enough of the ultrasound. Let's go with velocity. All right, so we're about uh, 28 minutes left. All right, so velocity. Okay, velocity. Velocity is a measure of how fast something moves in a particular direction. Like, for example, the, the FT in parentheses by FT, T in parentheses by parentheses with T plus triangle T. And the A is located down there, and the B is actually... The blue line that is crossed right there, and the D is actually on the triangle. And the the both triangles are actually stand. Um, actually, you might think it's a triangle and a triangle, and but it's actually a diamond. The diamond is actually located to this. Look, it's been written by this one. This is velocity. Okay, so the in, initial initial velocity is zero. And the final final velocity is v, so the v is actually the velocity, is actually the final. So, like for example, the dashed lines are going up or down, and uh, when a when a person's long is longest leg, you know how tall they are, is actually how tall their legs are. That can be like final velocity and in, or in, initial velocity, can be it. Okay, so the first page is actually Kapornitz Kapor, 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 and a uh, seal value and a uh, win rate. So the hashtag x dollar equal dollars equals equals actually not equals but hashtag times dollars times percent divided by L. You can see the V is sales velocity. Okay, so velocity is actually 
hashtag times dollars times percent divided by L, which is the length of sales cycle. So yeah. Okay, so this is the about the second picture. So the A equals DV divided by TT. V plus DV. DV, you can see the yellow lines and the green lines that are in arrows. M, there, there's M's in the orange circles. And the DR and the V, V equals DR divided by DT. Um, so the R and the R plus the R. So this is what do you think that what do you think that, that what do you think that's doing in this pay, in this picture? Comment down below. All right, wait. All right, wait, wait. Um, yeah, I actually take weight training class. Just to let you know. Yeah, wait. In science and engineering, the weight of an object is related to the amount of force uh, acting on the object. Okay, so the, just like this, for example, you have to know what your weight actually is. You know, how tall you are, tall you are, and you're growing, like, so much. When you're a little kid, you might grow some more. When you're getting older, you might grow, you're, you're getting, grow. you might, you, sometimes you might grow tall, you, you might grow you might grow troll, but just to, just to tell you guys, my buddy Jake is really, really tall than me, than everybody. Guys, you know how tall he is, bro? I'm like, I'm like way shorter than him, dude. Like, how can he get this tall this fast? I'm like, I am so confused right now. Like, how can he get this tall this fast? And the, and the winner is um, my buddy Jake in... There's another person um, which it, which really supports me is James Williams. Yeah, James is kind of taller than Jake. And I'm not sure how tall he is, but I can't even tell how tall James actually is. But he is taller than me, so yeah, yeah. He's like, uh, yeah, he's pretty much, uh, yeah. He was born in August 26th of 2002, so. Yeah, so he's he's 18, so I'll be 18 this year, so yeah, I'm turning 18 in May 16th, so yeah. Yeah, this is what weight actually is, so yeah. All right. Just one more second. X-rays. X-rays are a type of radiation called electromagnetic waves in a solid body shaped skeleton. You guys might find it very familiar. You guys find it very, very familiar with your teeth and your uh, and your body and your fingers and your toes and your whole body, for example, and and even your head and even your face. Obviously, you have all the bodies around your out around your body, like even your mouth and teeth. Makes a whole whole lot of sense. You have to take. You guys should take like anatomy, or anatomy. What is all? What is anatomy all about? So, I'm going to show you some questions about what are anatomy. What is anatomy all about? What is anatomy all about? Human anatomy all about. I was going to say that. Okay, so human anatomy is a study of the structures of the human body. An understanding of the anatomy is a key to practice in or medicine in other areas in health. Yeah, you can actually see what's in your what's inside your body. Um, I usually find it very interesting is I actually see a spoon in a body. I was like, what? How can you swallow a spoon? This is really stupid. How can you not? How can you swallow a spoon? That is so weird. That is so stupid. I don't know. And so, what do you learn in anatomy? Anatomy is theology. So, so, anatomy is theology. Degrees are the are for those who are fast fascinated by the science of medicine. You'll learn about the structure of the body or and how it functions. You'll gain 
an understanding of the causes, diagnosis, and a treatment of disease and its and its effect on different parts of the body. Okay, so I'm going to ask like five more questions. Okay, so what's human anatomy all about? In its broadest sense, anatomy is a study of a structure of an object, like I said, in this case of the human body. Human anatomy deals with the way the parts of humans from molecules to bones interact for, to form a functional unit, thus anatomy and theology are separate but complementary studies of how an organism works. Just like when you see like bubble guppies, I actually learned it for like when I was seven years old. I actually learned about the bones in my body, so actually when I was like uh when I was like two years old, I actually can feel the bo I actually I can I, I actually can feel the bone in my body. I was like so surprised. So yeah. Alright, four more. Okay, so how do you practice human anatomy? Okay, so simples. Think first, then draw scribbly lines or this or assign your brain to still processing the image. Memorize the simple forms. Break down the shapes into simple forms. Pay attention to the skeleton. Reveal incorrect. Don't just read about it. Steer clear of a snowman. Don't include every detail and be patient. Okay, so how do you succeed in anatomy? To help you be more success successful successful in your classes, we come up with 13 tips for studying anatomy more effectively. Schedule it in, start early, repetition, repetition, and re repetition, repetition, repetition. Switch it up, get creative, take clear notes, understanding your learning style. Use memorization tactics. All right, two more questions, that's it. Why is it important to study human anatomy? Anatomy and theology provide basic knowledge about the human body. It helps in clearing the fundamental concepts as to how our bodies function with the help of the classes of anatomy and theology. One gets to learn not the not only the theoretical concepts, but practical functionalities of the human body too. All right, last question. So what is the what is an example of the anatomy? The definition of an anatomy is a branch of science that deals with the structure of plants and animals. The study of the structure of the human leg is an example of a study in the field of anatomy. The bodily structure of, an, of a plant or an animal of, or, or of any of its parts. All right, so uh, let me know if you have any questions. When we, when, let me know if you have any other questions about the, the human anatomy. They don't answer for you right away, so... All right, so I'll see you guys in a part 28.